Gaurav, you know, what about Kyiv itself? The, the, the siege is definitely tightening with Kherson falling. Uh, you know, the, 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 the kind of pressure that builds around Kyiv and Kharkiv is going to increase quite dramatically because this is going to give the Russian armed forces confidence. Uh, you know, Putin finally has something to show for it. A big Black Sea port is now in Russian hands. Uh, in Kyiv, we've seen, you know, missile, uh, missile attack alerts since yesterday. What's it looking like today? What's the, what's the forecast for today in Kyiv? Shiv, late last night uh, at the Vauxhall, at the central railway station, there was a blast at a hotel right in front of it. And incidentally, just, just 24 hours before that, we were reporting from exactly the same spot as hundreds of people were, were leaving uh, this uh, city, the capital city, and using exactly that same access. A bomb fell there. Uh, near, near Vauxhall. That's led to a lot of panic. Of course, the railway station has some kind of an underground. It's not technically an under, underground shelter, but it is beneath the surface. Uh, it's an, And hundreds of people uh, spent the night there yesterday. Now, that, there was another blast that took place near a fuel dump. The fuel dump, we are told, is safe, but there was a massive strike that took place there. There was fight, uh, firing reported in two, three pockets uh, in the local media and also uh, through our local contact. And now on um, some of these social media platforms there are updates coming constantly about what's happening where including sighting of suspicious elements so in Kiev uh, uh, there, there is tremendous tension uh, there is apprehension that uh, like you said the siege is tightening the Russian forces are moving uh, closer that very famous 63 kilometer long convoy yesterday it, it was said that now it's barely 25 kilometers uh, from Kiev and they're moving forward with the aim of surrounding the city and starving the people to ensure that there are uh, no resources that come into the city. And once the city is surrounded from all sides, uh, will the Russians move in as is the uh, as is the defense plan of the city or will they starve the city uh, and, and then hope that President Zelensky will uh, relinquish charge uh, for somebody else to step in, somebody who's closer to Russia, that remains to be seen. Is that already happening on the ground, Gaurav, the fact that, you know, you're seeing Russia essentially surround the capital city of Kiev? Is that translating to supplies also, groceries, all of that running out in Kiev? Because that, as you mentioned, is the strategy for Russia going forward. You know, uh, so most of the petrol pumps are shut. Uh, yesterday when we were driving around the city, most of the petrol pumps were shut. So there's a shortage of benzene as they call it here. There, there is a shortage of fuel already, point one. Point two, majority of supermarkets are shut. Uh, an odd, you know, like a mom and pop store, an odd, odd neighborhood shop is open, but their supplies are also dwindling. Uh, chemist shops are seeing huge queues. Banks are seeing huge queues uh, because people just want to withdraw their money, have ready cash on their person. ATMs are not working and that's quite strange because one would expect that uh, you, you, you should be in, in a position to pay through your card. But that doesn't seem to be happening for, for a lot of people here. So that kind of uncertainty is killing. Long queues are very harrowing for people that they're standing for four hours, five hours in a queue uh, just to enter a supermarket or just to uh, go to a chemist shop. So that those shortages are already being felt. Medicine supplies are a major issue. Yesterday we spoke to a very, um, to, to somebody very senior in, in the government here. He did not want to speak on camera, but they did talk about uh, a desperate need for antibiotics, bandages, uh, splinters, a lot of other things that soldiers and civilians will require in the days and weeks ahead. But West is the only route through which uh, all these supplies can come. Uh, we are also told one of the battle commanders, one of the tactical level battle commanders said that uh, they desperately need more uh, surface to air missiles. They need stinger missiles and anti-tank guided missiles um, and some heavier caliber equipment to be able to fight the Russians at a stand off distance and not engage with them at very very close quarters uh, either with molotov cocktails uh, or with assault rifles now how many how much of that equipment will make its way into kiev for the defense of kiev remains perhaps the biggest challenge at this time here just want to show our viewers you know uh, the, the city map of ukraine right now uh, and to give you a fully updated status of where things are at right now Kyiv, where Gaurav is reporting from, 
is under siege. It's being pounded. There are missile attack alerts already. Uh, uh, as Akshita has been showing you since this morning, uh, there have been some attacks in some suburban areas after what has taken place yesterday. And remember, this is the uh, this is the main city. This is the capital city. It's the biggest metropolis. This is the power center of Ukraine, and this is what. Putin really needs to completely dominate what's happening in Ukraine. Let's go to the next city, Kharkiv. Very, very heavy fighting on, Akshita. That's right. And here it looks like, Shiv, this could be the next city to really fall to Russia. Because for the last many days, we've been getting in multiple reports of shelling, of explosion. Russia has been focusing on this city. It's important because it's the second largest city right now yeah. in Ukraine. So after, uh, you know, Kherson, which has already fallen, Shiv, this morning, we got the news. Ukraine has confirmed Kherson now is with Russia. Kherson, the first big city to fall to Russian control, is a huge shot in the arm for the Russian invasion. On day eight, they have finally been able to figure out how they can have something to show for it. Uh, let's just show you some pictures that we've been getting in from the different cities. We've just shown you where, uh, where, where things are actually uh, on right now. There's a fourth city as well of Severodonetsk, which uh, is seeing a great deal of shelling that's on. That's also on, on the southern tip of uh, Ukraine. Uh, not very far from the Moldovan border, apparently, where there's a lot of shelling going on. So there are multiple cities that are facing a lot of bombardment. Mariupol, where India today's Gaurav Savant and Rajesh Pawar were stationed just a few days ago, is already under siege. It is being bombarded in a very, very aggressive manner. So multiple cities uh, in, in Ukraine are seeing a sort of concerted attack. Oktirka, where Akshita and I brought you images yesterday, uh, you know, of the kind of devastation that has been wrought there as well as a result of rocket attacks. Remember, these cities, Oktirka, Kharkiv, they're very close to the Russian border, which basically means Russia is able to target them using cruise missiles that don't have to be stationed inside Ukraine. They can be launched from within uh, Russian territory itself. Uh, we're seeing a pattern here, essentially, Shiv, in all yeah. the cities that we're mentioning. It's largely on this side, on yeah. my side, the eastern side of Ukraine. A few close to Kharkiv, from where Russian troops perhaps are hoping to push into Kyiv. Southern part of Ukraine also, as we showed you, slowly Russia is gaining a foothold there as well. They'll be focusing on trying to get the port city of Odessa near the Black Sea because that would be a huge strategic win for them. But from what we just showed you, the points, the siege cities, it's clear that right now Russia is trying to focus on on getting east, north and south to them. And then from there, the invasion plan moves forward to yeah. move completely to the west as well. But let's also focus, Shiv, uh, on some of the images that yeah, you know we've absolutely. gathered. These are images that will highlight how bad the devastation is because it shows what cities in Ukraine, beautiful cities yeah. of Ukraine, look like before the war and now. And these are truly such heartbreaking images that we've put together uh, of, you know, uh, of the TV tower that's been bombed uh, in, in Kyiv. This is what it looked like earlier. And this is what it looks like now after that bombing. Five people have apparently been killed in the bombing of this TV tower. There's nothing left of the top of it. Just a contrast to show you what the city looked like before and after. Devastating, devastating contrast. So we just showed you Kiev. This is what Kharkiv looks like. We've been telling you about how there's been so much of destruction being reported on the streets of Kharkiv. Lot of shelling, explosion. This is the result of that. A beautiful city now ravaged, completely painted grey by rubble, by debris and by thick plumes of smoke emerging because of the kind of assault on Kharkiv for the last hundred others. We showed you how, in fact, uh, uh, there was that image uh, of a government building going up its smoke, completely blown to smithereens. The road previously bustling with action, this was in the heart of Kharkiv, yeah. now looks like a ghost town ship with just rubble and debris all around. Terrible, terrible situation in the city of Kharkiv. Uh, we're seeing this kind of devastation. Let's move to the next set of images right now. Uh, these uh, are again, once again, Kharkiv uh, images of what things look like earlier and what things look like now. Another part of Kharkiv seen here, uh, you know, an amusement park on the outskirts of the city and very, very plain to see what it looked like earlier and what, what it looked like now. Ancient cities of Ukraine, parts of them being brought to rubble. Remember, it's very important to note that no city has so far been bombarded in its entirety. So even though there is large-scale uh, uh, large scale damage being done in many cities, no city has been flattened. There are only certain sites that are being targeted, but the devastation in those localized areas is pretty extreme, as is being brought out 
uh, you know, in these images. Gaurav continues to be with me, so I want to take uh, one quick question with him before he heads out. Uh, Gaurav, th these contrasting images are so disturbing. A sense of ancient cities, uh, you know, in many places being brought to rubble. Some of these neighborhoods, some of these localities have existed for centuries together. Oldest buildings. It's disturbing to see the contrast of what it looked like earlier and what it looks like now. Shiv, you're absolutely right. It's horrifying. Uh, you know, when uh, camera person Pavan Kumar and I were driving through Kharkiv uh, and, and we spent two days there just before this battle started because that was the time that we were heading to uh, Mariupol. But in Kharkiv, there are such prominent buildings uh, which, which actually signify uh, and memorials which signify... Uh, Russia or Soviet Union's very strong stand uh, against Nazi Germany and they've got captured tanks of, of the Germans. They've got their own victorious tanks and 130mm guns and uh, the T-35 tanks that fought uh, in, in, in those battles. They have huge churches, they have ancient buildings uh, and this is also the industrial hub of uh, of Ukraine and this industrial hub, especially the area that that manufactures the tanks, it th there's a big tank manufacturing uh, facility there. Uh, uh, Ukraine, as you well know, manufactures the T80 tanks. Uh, those facilities have systematically been targeted. Those vital installations have systematically been targeted. And when I was speaking to a very senior uh, journalist uh, in Kharkiv, a blogger, he told me that there are elements within Kharkiv who've given precise coordinates with GPS coordinates uh, to the Russians that this is where strategic or tactical level importance uh, buildings or infrastructure or facilities are and they were systematically taken down. Uh, it, it is horrifying to see the death, destruction and the devastation caused and unfortunately there still are a number of foreigners who've been caught in it uh, and they're desperately trying to get out because Kharkiv again is an education hub. In Ukraine there was a lot of concentration um, uh, of, of, uh, of focus on, on education. So whether it's engineering or medicine and some of the cities that you and Akshita are mentioning yes. including Odessa. So Odessa, Kiev, Kharkiv, these are major education centers. They have old universities, huge universities of international repute uh, where some of mm -hmm. the world leaders have also uh, studied and people now are trying to get out of here, especially foreigners, a task that's easier said than done given right. the shelling and firing that's on Shiv and Akshita. Uh, you know, Gaurav, you've seen it firsthand. You were there before this full-fledged conflict. So you've seen how beautiful Ukraine was and now how you're seeing so much of destruction around. Let's get those images also, Shiv, yes. of uh, parts of Ukraine, the country, uh, and the architecture, how it looked before the war and now how it's been blown to bits because of shelling, because of missile attacks. This one from Kiev. Yeah. Uh, you know, truly, truly stunning images. This is what uh, this particular skyline, this residential neighborhood of Kiev looked like earlier. And this is what it actually looks like now. Shattered, lots of rocket attacks, uh, uh, you know, bringing it down. This is one of the big government buildings that was struck by a, a cruise missile, the outside of it. This was before that very, very dramatic image that went viral. This is what the outside uh, of that looks like at this point of time. Debris everywhere. And remember, these are all ancient cities that we are talking about. Uh, this is Ivan Kiev, not very far from Kiev, another residential neighborhood, the same, uh, the, same, the same building, in fact, the same house, in fact. Before, it looked like this in peacetime. Here's what it looks like right now. Uh, you know, on fire, broken apart, shattered. This is what Ivan Kiev looks like right now. It's been another target of the big rocket attacks. This is, uh, this is uh, Mikolev. This is uh, Mikolev. That's another place that's... Um, uh, a, a large bustling metropolis, large buildings, high buildings, very old as well. Here's what it looked like, lit up in peacetime before the invasion. Well, here's an image of what Mikolaev looks like right now. It's, it's shattered. Many of those residential areas have come under fire. One of, you know, uh, Akshita, one of the most compelling images of mm -hmm. the Cherniv area. I mean, just look at this. This is a picture of what the city looked like earlier in peacetime, bustling, beautiful, yeah. you know, a, a tourism hub, uh, as it were, very, very green, lots of tourists, uh, you know, like, like any nice, beautiful, modern city, very green and nice. 
here's the skyline over Cherny Hive right now. I mean, I, I can't think of a bigger contrast of pictures, Akshita. Uh, the entire area painted grey almost because yeah. of, you know, all of the smoke that's blowing out of these ex sites which have been bombed in the last few days. These areas, bustling with activity, as you pointed out, Shiv, are now essentially ghost towns. There's nobody around. The streets are empty. The streets, which were so beautiful, so yeah. beautifully maintained, as you see there, filled with debris right now. We've been getting reports also from many of these cities in Kiev. Gaurav Savant, and what's really stood out in the course of our coverage shift has been these stories of Ukrainians yes. who refuse to give up in the face of this conflict, refuse to give up in the face of war. And this is a conversation that Gaurav Savant had with one such Indian Ukrainian family. Yeah. Take a look at this. When thousands are leaving the Ukrainian capital Kiev, when there is an imminent threat of a Russian attack, there is an Indian Ukrainian family that refuses to leave. In fact, they're preparing their weapons from their pistols to their rifles to their assault rifles to protect their home, their town, their city and their country. Let me introduce Kuldeep Kumar. He's a prominent businessman here, runs a construction business. Oksana, his wife, she's Ukrainian, runs a restaurant here. Uh, their two lovely children, Angelica and Pranav. Angelica is in school, Pranav goes to university. Kuldeep ji. Yeah, please. Why didn't you leave this country? Aapne kyu ye man banaya ki aap ye desh nahi chhodenge ya ye shehar nahi chhodenge jab Rus ka hamla kisi bhi waqt ho sakta hai? Dekhiye plan actually kya mere akele se plan nahi banna tha. Maine apne bachche aur wife se pucha. Maine even inko kaha tha takriban do week pehle ki chalo aap logo ko Hindustan bhej dete hain. Agar koi aise problem aayi to bole nahi. कि हम लोग कहीं नहीं जाएंगे हम लोग यहीं रहेंगे इवन मेरे बेटे ने मुझसे कहा अगर हिंदुस्तान में लड़ाई हो रही होगी तो क्या आप वहां से भाग जाओ ये मुझे वर्ड है कि भाग जाओगे जो इन्होंने इंग्लिश में बोला कि आप भाग जाओगे यहां से तो मुझे लगा नहीं मैं हिंदुस्तान छोड़ के तो नहीं भागूंगा अगर ऐसी बात होगी तो इन्होंने बोला हम भी नहीं जाएंगे यहीं रहेंगे यहीं जिएंगे यहीं मरेंगे एंजेलिका यू आर अ यंग स्कूल स्कूल गर्ल आर यू स्केयर्ड of these missiles and rockets and air attacks and air raid sirens. I was scared at first, but then I realized that everything is going to end sooner or later. And it doesn't deserve to be scared. We know that our army will protect us and all the, uh, we just need spirit and weapons. Your spirits are high, your morale is high. Pranav, you go to college. In college, one would expect you'd have um, a pen in your hand or a computer, but you have an assault rifle. Yes, I do, but this is only for self-defense. If anything does happen, we are here to protect our country. As my sister said, the willpower of this country is the strongest. No other country has the willpower that Ukraine has that will be there to defend our country no matter what. Pranav talks about the spirit of fighting against all odds. But what do you require, what do Ukrainians require from, from the world just now? So, no, 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 Admira. Admira. Поддержку. Оружие. Support. И веру. Weapons. В нашу победу. And belief in our country that we will win this war. And what's your message to Russia that says that this country is becoming a playground for NATO countries? What's your message? What would you want to tell your relatives, your friends, the family in Russia or the leadership in Russia? На нашу землю. Апни бачок ой ха пар вар ке лие мат бхей. И пусть будет мир во всем мире. Ор ма ча ти ю ки пури дуния ме пис рахе. That's the desire. That's the desire. The desire is for a ceasefire. The desire is for peace. But is that even possible given the way Kharkiv is being attacked, Sumi is being attacked, Kherson is being attacked, Kiev could be next. हाँ हो सकता है कि नेक्स्ट की वो हो सकता है हम लोग रहे ना रहे देखिए दो 2.5 मिलियन करीब लोग हैं अभी जो की में रहते हैं अटैक होगा तो 
लोग जनता जो है वो सड़कों पर तो आएगी उसमें से कुछ लोग जिएंगे कुछ लोग मरेंगे बात ये नहीं कि अब अब क्या होगा फ्यूचर में जो इसके जो असर आएगा हमारी जिंदगी पर पर वो इससे ज्यादा भयानक होगा हम वार नहीं चाहते हम चाहते हैं कि यूक्रेन का कोई भी आदमी बिना बात पे वार नहीं चाहता हम लोग पीस चाहते हैं और हमारी रिक्वेस्ट है मोदी जी से क्योंकि मैं इंडियन हूं मैं उनसे ज्यादा रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा हूं और बाकी जितने भी आसपास के या दुनिया के जितने भी देश हैं उनसे कि इस वार को किसी तरह रोके वेपन्स हमें मत दीजिए लेकिन इस युद्ध पे विराम लगाइए हमारी आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट है जो भी आदमी सुन रहे हैं आप वोट कीजिए हमारे लिए यूक्रेन के लिए कि यूक्रेन की जो लड़ाई है रशिया के साथ वो रुके और कंप्रोमाइज हो और ना किसी को अपनी जान गंवानी पड़े ना रशियन को और ना यूक्रेनी को तो मेरी रिक्वेस्ट है सब देशों से कि इस युद्ध पर विराम लगवाइए किसी भी तरीके इसमें कंप्रोमाइज करवाइए देर शुड बी अडल ग्राउंड फाउंड देर शुड बी नेगोशिएशन देर शुड बी डायलॉग एंड दिस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दैट थ्रेट टू बिकम इवन मोर डेंजरस इन द आवर्स एंड डेज अहेड दिस शुड स्टॉप दैट्स द डिजायर ऑफ दिस फैमिली एंड पर वेरी लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल दैट वीव बीन स्पीकिंग टू for joining me here on this india today special slava ukraine giram slava with cameraman pavan kumar in kiev ukraine gorav savant for india today